Oh. Hey, Shannon. Oh. Hey, Leslie. I have a good joke for you. You do? Yeah. What did the boat captain have for lunch? I don't know. What did the boat captain have for lunch? A Caesar salad. Oh. <laughs> that was a good one. Oh. oh, hey, everybody. Didn't see you there. Come on in for another summer reading hour. What happened to us this week? We are under the ocean this week. So we're taking a deep dive into the summer reading program. And we might find some other friends, maybe some creatures, and we're gonna share some really cool things with you today. What is that? Oh, I don't know. Something's coming, I can hear something. Oh. I don't know, I've never heard a sound like that I before. Not either. Uh-oh, keep your eyes peeled. Oh, whoa. Well, orca whales, did you know that orca whales are commonly known as killer whales? Oh, okay. They got that title from sailors hundreds of years ago that observed orcas hunting larger whales in groups, and then they were dubbed killer whales. Wow, so that's where that name comes from. Very cool. Ooh, I would be careful at your end, Leslie. Oh. Did you know that an orca's teeth are around four inches long? Four inches. Hey! Be careful. Four inches long. That's some big teeth. Oh, goodness. The largest male orca weighed approximately, approximately 22,000 pounds, which is around the same weight as six cars. Whoa. And it measured at 32 feet long, which is around the height of this building from the top to the bottom. Wow, can you imagine? This must be a baby. <laughs> must be a baby. <laughs> so a group of orcas is called a pod, and they hunt in pods to catch their prey. And they eat things like seals and fish and even other whales. I don't know, this one seems pretty nice this so seems far. seems pretty calm. <laughs> and an orca can live between 50 and 90 years in the wild. So I wonder how old this one is. I don't know. Thanks for visiting us, Mr. Orca. Let's send the orca on its way here. We'll send it off. What else? I recognize that sound. That can't be a good sound. That cannot be a that good sound. That cannot be a good sound. He's as nice as the whale. This is a shark. A shark has now joined us down here. Hey, how did the hammerhead sharks do their math exam? I don't know. How'd they do? They nailed it. <laughs> well, this guy does not look like a hammerhead shark. This might be a great white shark. I'm not sure. Do you know there are approximately 440 different species of sharks and sharks have been on Earth since before the time of the dinosaurs. Wow, I didn't know that. Did you know, I'm going to give you some teeth facts because I'm down here at the you shark. You are bed. at the teeth end. Oh, so if a shark loses its teeth, it will be able to regrow that same one within the same day. And sharks can regrow approximately 20,000 teeth in their lifetime. Oh my goodness. Whoa, no shortage of teeth there. <sighs> Oh. You know that short sharks can swim up to 40 kilometers an hour? Whoa. Which is 10 times faster than the average human can swim. Mm. So, we'll be very careful. Well, Hopefully like the rhinos little. from the safari, you can't outswim a shark. Uh oh. And you might want to outswim them because sharks can have anywhere between 5 and 15 rows of teeth in their mouth. So humans only have one row of teeth. Can you imagine having 15 in your mouth? No wonder they have to regrow them all the time. Oh my goodness. Well, let's hopefully send this lovely shark on its way. Thanks for visiting. Thank you. Well, what should we do now, Shannon? I don't know. Maybe there's... Oh wait, I think I see somebody over there. 
Is that Louise? Louise? Louise, the supervisor from the Interkit branch in the library. Let's swim on over and see what Louise is up to. All right. Hi, I'm Louise and I'm at the Interkit Public Library. And I wanted to show you some things that, that I've made um, using some stones, just some little crafts. I have a big container here of stones, but you might have some just out in your yard that you could find and and use to make these crafts. You could use sticks as well and paper and and lots of other materials that you could just um, use to put together some some little things to make the craft. I used paper plates for for my stone crafts just because they're heavier than than just a sheet of paper. You could use a cereal box, cut it up and cut it into different shapes if you wanted and use it to glue because it would be nice and sturdy as well. I used some white glue um, just so I had a nice strong glue for gluing the stones just because they are heavier than something like paper and that seemed to work pretty well. So I'll show you some of the things that that I was trying. It's more of a kind of an ocean scene. So you can see there were uh, a lot of little stones that I had and I just smeared a bunch of glue on there and put stones just kind of put a bunch on top and press them down so they would stay and uh, that makes the ocean floor and then I had some feathers that I just glued the bottom of the feathers so that they would kind of move around just the way plants would move around it if you were in the ocean and um, and then there's some things that are kind of hiding behind. I had some shells and I put a couple of shells on. There's another one over there. And then the fish, I had some, just a stone for the body, a stone for the tail. You could also draw on the, the tail or use some paper and make, uh, you could make some fins. I, I colored with marker to make the scales on the fish, but again, you could paint that and you could uh, have that done ahead, painted, and then before you glued it or probably even after. And then I had a little round stone and I just drew some for the jellyfish. It's a little hard to see maybe, but there's my little. Well, that was great. Thanks, Louise. I love that, that was so cool. But we have something to share with you too. So we are going to make this jawsome shark puppet. The biting shark. Biting shark, how do we do that? Well, in order to make your own biting shark puppet, you need a paper plate, a couple little straws or sticks, you're gonna need some paint, paint brushes, of course. You can use a googly eye if you got one. If you don't, you can just use marker. And then we have these little, what are these called? They're like the butterfly pins. There's so a name for them. the pins that you can pull two sides out of. Now, if you don't have one of those, you can definitely use a pipe cleaner or something like that. Good. All right. And some scissors. So to start our craft, you have to cut your piece of paper in half. And you gotta hang on to that top half. We're gonna use it for the other pieces. And you get to the end, kind of curve it around to make the nose of the shark. Sorry, did I rush it again? So just curve your ends a little bit. Okay. Now with this piece, we can cut out our fin tail, the tail, front fin there, the other fin. So your tail, do you want to show them how to cut a tail fan? Sure, why not? Then you also need your bottom lip plate to have that as well, which comes out of this piece here. Good. To make my tail, nice tail, and then you can make a nice triangle front fin there. And we need that infamous dorsal fin. 
for the shark. The one that you see poking out of the water. Very friendly shark friend earlier, <laughs> thankfully. One. Good. And then for your mouth, it's just this bottom part here. So just cut it out as long as you want your bottom lip to be. Like that, out of my edge. Yep. Okay. And then you would uh, Cut it right along the line so you have that kind of dipped shape. Okay. And you can round your corners and then you gotta cut your teeth then from the top. Ooh, all those many, many rows of teeth. Lots of cutting in this craft. The back doesn't matter too much because you're not gonna see that part. It's gonna be hidden in behind. So there's the jaw of our shark. They're just like little triangles. Perfect. Okay. And then you're gonna do the same on your upper plate too, where they'll meet. Here. Once we get all our pieces done, we can assemble. Big as teeth as whales do, though. Those are quite a bit smaller, aren't they? I don't know. It's like when you find them washed up on the beach because they keep losing them. They can always, they have lots, and I'm sure they're extremely sharp. We know that. Okay. All right. Next, we can paint. Okay. All right. A lot of the times the shark has a lighter underbelly. So if something's below the shark looking up, it blends in. So it has the, the white belly and it blends in with the sun. So I'm gonna paint the top part of my shark blue. to paint my tail and my fins as well, right? Yeah. Okay. Do that. Make sure you, like what Shannon's doing, make sure your table's covered. Your mom and dad don't want paint all over the place. It's for a far easier cleanup. <laughs> So we will be gluing our fins on. So it's best to let your paint completely dry before you start gluing on top of it. But it should still stick. All right. Now 
Now what should we do? Well, we can attach the bottom jaw as well. So take your little piece here. This is where our fancy pin comes in or your pipe cleaner. Pipe cleaner, you probably have to poke a hole ahead of time. These things, you can usually poke them right through without having to, but I don't think this one's gonna go. I'm going to carefully poke mine through. If you need help with anything, any of these sort of steps, try to find a big person to help you out. There we go. All right. Just gonna line them up. Poke them through. And then split it open at the back. Just like that. That lets the jaw move. <laughs> Coming together. <laughs> All right, so some finishing touches for our shark here. Here's our tail, our front fin, and our dorsal fin. Which you can glue on. And your eyeball. Oh, yes. <laughs> if you have a googly eye, you can glue that on there. You can paint yours on. is looking a little like a whale shark, I think. It's coming together. Yeah, how many species of sharks did we say? 440? Yeah, there's a lot. All right. And then, there's sticks. So we would attach one stick to the body of your shark, and the other one you attach very carefully to the jaw. Once it's all so dry, you're able move it. So you can tape those there. You can really secure them. So can... All right. Well, that was fun. I say, let's head up the land so we can read a story now. Yeah, good idea. We definitely don't want to get our book wet. Definitely don't. All right. Misunderstood Shark. Friends Don't Eat Friends. Written by Amy Dykeman and illustrated by Scott Magoon and published by Orchard Books. Last time on Underwater World with Bob. Shark ate me, get me out of here. Uh, that's strange, I can hear Bob, but I can't see Bob. Bob. <laughs> okay, action. Bob, you look different, where you been? You know perfectly well where I've been. No, Bob, your intro is, hello people, today on Underwater World with Bob. Bob's going off script. Bob never goes off script. You ate me, shark. In our last episode, I defended you to the people and you ate me. The people are watching again? Not according to our ratings. <sighs> you misunderstood. I didn't eat you. I was just giving you a tour. I don't believe you, shark. But I swear on all the bones in my body. Think of your show, Bob. My show? Fine, fun fact about bones. Hey, you don't have any bones in your body. Shark skeletons are made of cartilage. Cartilage? The squishy stuff in the human nose? You mean boogers? Cool, I swear on all the boogers in my body. We all know you ate me, shark. If I ate you, where's your proof? Hang on, I don't feel so good. Cut the video, he's gonna... Wow. Oh. Did Shark just restore video? Ahem. Bloop. I hate when that happens. What did we just see?
Gross facts about that. It's called gastric aversion. When a shark swallows an object he can't digest, like glasses, when he eats someone, the shark expels his stomach out of his mouth, ejects the object, then sucks his stomach back into place. Sharks can barf their stomachs out? I can't even do a cartwheel. You shouldn't leave your glasses in my stomach, Bob. That's littering. Ah, shark! My glasses were only in your stomach because you ate me. Admit it and apologize. Or, or... Or the ocean's not big enough for the two of us. And fun fact about that, 71% of the planet is covered by ocean. But, but I thought we were friends. Friends don't eat friends. Well, friends don't make friends feel bad about it. Goodbye forever. I've never seen sharks so worked up. I have right before feeding frenzy. Feeding frenzy? We have to stop him. You want us to chase shark? Don't try this at home, people. Shark swimming so fast. My armpits are sweaty. All eight armpits. Less sweating, more swimming. Great white sharks can swim up to 35 miles per hour. Ugh, we'll never catch him. We don't have to catch Mr. Shark. I'm learning tracking in Seal Scouts. He's, he's. He's in the sulking grotto. Go away. This is his feeding frenzy, Sugar. You'll get cavities, Shark. Actually, shark's teeth are coated in fluoride. Sharks don't get cavities. Oh, I'm so jealous. You misunderstood. I'm not sulking. I'm hanging out with my real friend. Um, um, this guy. Stop, put me down, I'm armed. You don't even know him, shark. I do too. His name's Sticky. He's not. And he's my real friend. I am not. And he never hurt my feelings like you did. I hurt your feelings, but you ate me. Drama! I'm out of here! Rip. Ah! Ah! Relax. I can grow another one. Shark. I'm sorry I hurt your feelings. I'll try not to hurt your feelings again. I... I accept your apology. And? Anything else you'd like to say to me? Um... Hmm. Okay, I ate you. And I'm sorry, and I'll try not to eat you again, because you taste gross. Shark! Ah, I mean... Because you really are my friend, Bob. Aw, that's so cute. Hug time. And now we'll have sleepovers and make each other friendship bracelets and... Shark stomach. Shark still hungry. Don't worry, I'll have a snack. You want some? No thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. Goodbye, people. Tune in next time for another episode of Underwater World with Bob and friends. We'll have more fun facts you can really sink your teeth into. Okay, everybody, that's a wrap. Well, that's a wrap. That was a great book. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you from Louise and Inner Kip. And thank you to the orca and the shark that joined us earlier. Ooh. <laughs> Fabulous. So there is still time for you to sign up for the summer reading program. We have a bean stack website. So you sign up on there and you earn badges for every 30 minutes that you read. And there are a lot of different activity and challenge badges as well. So one of the badges is you can write a letter to a character in a book. So you could write a letter to Shark, you could write a letter to Bob or anybody else in the crew. And you could earn a badge that way. So we have lots of underwater books to check out if you want to check out our catalog online, ocl.net. Yeah, and anything you saw in the video, you can place a hold on that on the catalog. And any of your our branches have curbside 
and you can get in touch with your local library branch to see sort of what services are available right now and how we can help you. All right, so we will see you next week for a whole new theme and a whole new summer reading hour. So take care, everybody.